Hey guys, welcome back here to my channel. This is Paula and I am with Automated Dynamics. I am a field apps engineer. And this week I had a really good question like I normally do from customers who are uh, putting together some wireless products. And so in this video, I wanna answer how to do the register mapping in the DXM configuration software, uh, adding multiple nodes, uh, to a network and getting it ready for Ethernet IP or Modbus TCP or anything like that. So I'm just going to walk you through setting all of that up. Okay, so let's start off with the data sheet. In this case, for this application, we're working with a P8 radio node. Again, this is going to be only applicable for performance networks. Uh, if you're using a multi-hop radio, I probably have another video for that. But um, I've done some register mapping videos, but maybe let's dive into some more details here. Specifically to the P8 radios, you're gonna find that inside the cover, you have to open up the radio. You want to make sure that the dip switch setting is set correctly for what you, for the input and output combination that you wanna use. In this case, we're interested in using all as input only. So, uh, which is the default setting, so you actually don't have to do anything in this case, but notice if you wanted it to be like six in, six out, you would have to assign those dip switches accordingly. Another thing to note here on the data sheet is the holding registers. This is the information that we want to look at when we start, and I apologize, I know the font is a little small. So we have a formula that you'll need to reference when you do the register mapping. So let's head on over here now to the DXM configuration software. This video is being recorded as of DXM software version 4.15.0. So when we come here to the main section to connect to your uh, device, I am currently not connected to anything. I just wanna walk you through how to do this. Uh, you want to probably set it up for a traditional setup, which is, uh, which means that we're going to create our own memory map. And then to connect to it, you have serial, TCP IP. You want to use TCP IP if you are connected over Ethernet, and serial if you're connected over the USB. And then you just click connect. You'll notice here at the bottom there's a status LED, which will let you know when you are connected. So under local registers, you notice we have nothing, but uh, the first thing we actually wanna do is register mapping. So if it is, if the physical input or output is an input, then we want to create a read rule for that. If your terminals are going to be set for outputs, then we want to set a write rule. So in this case, we have nothing but inputs, so we're gonna do a read rule. So let's go ahead and add a read rule. And we're going to call this node one input. Okay, so from slave ID one, which means pretty much if, if it's a radio and if it's on the performance network, it is going to be slave ID one always. If it were a Modbus uh, device, then the Modbus ID would be the slave ID in that case. If you were writing to the LEDs on the DXM, you would be using uh, a different uh, slave ID. Just to give you a heads up here under tools, under register source, you wanna look at, for example, if I'm using my ISM registers, which is the radio layer, you'll notice that the address is one, which is what we're referencing right now. If you had uh, DXM outputs physically on your gateway, then you'll notice that those outputs would be on slave ID 203. So this is a good resource to let you know what slave ID you're under. We do have some display registers as well, and those are on 201. And then our local registers, if uh, those are located on address 199. So in this case, we're just going to uh, bring all of those radio uh, node registers into the processor, into the local registers of the DXM. So we're going to keep everything at one right now. So slave ID one, I hope that made sense. And we're actually going to read, um, looks like we have 16 
total registers. We're just gonna read all of those. So we're gonna type in 16 here. And then we're gonna start at, this is going to be the address that's on the data sheet for those inputs. They actually start at this address right here. So if my node number is number one, then I'm going to times that times 16, and I'm going to add one, and that's gonna give me a value of 17. So that's my starting address and notice that it goes in order, consecutive order to number 32. And then this is the uh, tricky part maybe for some people to local register. So basically what we're doing right is like kind of like a register copy. So this is going to be really an arbitrary number. I don't know, between 1000 and I'm sorry, between one and like, I think a thousand, you'll have to check the manual for what registers are allocated for 16 bit holding registers. But uh, for the most part, we're just gonna leave this, uh, we could actually leave it just at 17 so that it stays the same, but I'm, I'm actually just gonna leave it at one. And, um, and this is the value, these are the values that my PLC is gonna wanna look at. So this is what's, what my PLC wants to, to talk to, to communicate to over ethernet. Okay, so I've set that up. I don't need to make any changes there. When I give my registers names, you'll see them populated up here. So we'll do that last. Let's do one more read rule. And we're going to call this node to inputs. Again, from save ID one, again, we're going to read 16 of those. And this time they are starting at 33. Why? Because we're on node number two. If you look at that formula, two times 16 is 32 plus one, that's 33. That's where it starts. So we want to start at a uh, holding register 33. And then we're going to copy this to local register on the processor board. We'll start at 17 just to keep it consecutive here on my memory map. So this is done. This is what I need to do for my PLC to read something. Of course, if uh, if you want to annotate something, this is this is um, uh, a good practice to give everything a name so you remember what goes where. We do have a quick uh, modify multiple registers, so I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to set the name here to uh, node one, IO and then just underscore and I'm going to increment by one and click modify registers and notice it updates for me uh, a lot quicker and then on my next uh, node 2 I want to start here at 17 and end with what was it 32 and I'm just going to change node to IO underscore increment by one modify and we have our second set. So now all I have to do is do a file save and do a DXM and send it to my DXM. This is now ready for Modbus TCP. If I wanted to make this accessible for Ethernet IP, what I need to do now is go here to my protocol conversion and since it's all inputs, I want to designate the destination um, these are all going to go from DXM to the originator, meaning the PLC. I can make this change for each one of each one of those radios. Um, so each one of those registers. Sorry, I just need to allocate the destination here, and I have to do that for each local register. So again, I can come here to the modify multiple, end on 32. Uh, we're actually going to leave this part unchanged for the name. We don't want to mess that up. Protocol conversion. We're going to set all of these to Ethernet IP DXM to originator modify. And so now I'm ready for Ethernet IP. Um, I hope this video answered all the questions you might have had about register mapping in performance networks and adding multiple nodes. See you on the next video.